Okay, hey y'all, Dodge here. Um, man, it has been a hell of a weekend. Let's celebrate by opening a box, huh? I attended a couple of pre-release events. Um, I don't know about you guys. I went, let's see, 3 and one and... 2-1 in another. Then there was a uh, win a box event. That didn't go well. But we came back with a box. All in all. Let's see if we can find some, some dope yeah. cards here. You can hear Issa. She's not too happy about anything. Lumbering Battlement. This card I think is probably fine somewhere maybe not standard maybe standard if there's a big Orzov deck that would be pretty sick right be playable there and you can hear Issa rolling around in the other room crashing furniture into the wall light up the stage super good glass of the guild pack maybe future standard or uh, commander staple who knows? We don't have too many one-drop gold creatures, multicolored creatures. There's a couple of them with hybrid mana symbols. There's a Skewer the Critics. Yeah, yeah. Uh-uh. No, man. No, honey. What you need? What do you need, girl? I don't think High Alert's going to do anything. Judith the Scorch Diva. I talked about her and a couple other cards in my video about additions to the humans deck in modern and I'm real excited to play with her um, apparently everything's legal on magic online so I can start making those changes later this evening okay repudiate and replicate replicate seems like it might actually be decent somewhere you guys can't see any of that. That that focus is real bad. Sorry about that, guys. We'll have to shoot the next one on the DSLR. Okay, we are looking for deputies. Tithe takers probably okay. Um, I'm sure that this card is going to see play in standard almost unthinkable to consider that it wouldn't uh, you know it's almost a Thalia. It's a Thalia for your turn that also hits abilities okay breeding pool I, I, this is one of the new shocklands where I don't like the art as much uh, we'll go ahead and grab that pitiless pontiff as well I don't know we could see aristocrats in the format soon I'm not sure exactly how likely that is. Uh, this guy, Terramander, holy shit, that's a fucking card, y'all. And a Deploy Depose. Gonna set that aside as well. Feather of Horrors. Oh, look, a Foil Sky Tether. No one cares. Feather of Horrors, though. This card could see play in standard. It does a lot of things. It doesn't make the camera autofocus the way I want to. But... Having a effect uh, that's reminiscent of the old sieges, um, and then also just being able to pay four mana to to ping a creat or a, an opponent or planeswalker. It doesn't hit creatures, but as bad as that might sound, it's actually not terrible. I don't think captive audience. This is another one of those things that probably just ends up in Commander. I don't expect it's going to do a whole lot. Um, I have the last breath, certainly not doing anything in any relevant formats anytime soon. Alright, we are off to the rampage of the clans. Look at that. That's... That's probably not something that sees any standard play either. 
It might be okay for Commander, though. Instant speed, four mana, destroy all artifacts or enchantments, and then for each one, their controller gets a 3-3. Three, three. I, I could see that doing some things. All right, Smothering Tithe. Uh, this is sort of a new Rhystic Studies. I don't think it'll ever see as much play as that card does, but... Forcing the opponent to pay two mana every time they draw a card or give you a treasure, especially in Highlander formats. That is pretty good, y'all. Amplifier. Now, this thing took me by surprise at the pre release. I thought that its power and toughness change lasted until the end of the turn. It's until your next turn, so if you flip over a 5-2, that thing is just a 10-4. Um, for longer than I am able to try and kill it. Another Repudiate Replicate. Man, I really hope this card makes waves now that we've seen two of them. I would hate to be sitting on a pile of those. Keep on going. Cry of the Carnarium. I'm really excited about this card. Um, I think this could actually be kind of a big deal in Standard at some point. So we're going to hang on to that. Thrash and Threat. This I don't really feel so good about. Don't think that's going to do much. It's a cool card though. Cool casual card. I won't say... Commander, I'll say casual because I don't know that that does anything in Commander. But maybe another lumbering battlement. Okay, so this is, uh, this box is getting a little bit ridicu ridiculous with these duplicate bunk rares. And these packs do not want to open. God, look at that motherfucker. Ugh, oh, to catch a predator, right? Alright, let's see. Can we get there? Immolation Shaman, not getting us there, but it's a card. It's okay. It can be played. It maybe sees sideboard play. It reads like a worse Harsh Mentor, and Harsh, Harsh Mentor was already one of those cards that just didn't do anything during its time in standard mammoth spider that's super exciting and then we have a mass manipulation again probably a commander card doubtful to see play in standard i don't even know if i would play it in limited honestly best case scenario you get a couple of dudes with it super late game and you've been hanging on the whole time Worst case scenario, that's a six man of control magic. Uh, Sphinx of Foresight, and we could open one of these in every single pack and I'd be happy. That thing just has to go in the Drake stack, right? Like, there's no way that doesn't see play in the Drake stack. That's such a powerful effect. Another Skewer the Critics and a Growth Spiral. Take both of those. I'm sure there was another growth spiral somewhere in this pile of stuff that I've set to the side that I didn't grab. Taste of Karlov. Not very exciting either. I know people are making kind of a big deal out of her um, because she does buff your tokens with Vigilance and Lifelink. And you do get to double your afterlife triggers, but is she even going to get to see the field? Is what I want to know. Here we go. I love this new artwork for Hallowed Fountain. I love the new artwork for so many of these. Um, breeding pool's kind of boring. I do like that you get to see the little pods that they are breeding in. I think that's pretty nifty. Alright. Gutter Bones. Gutter Bones! Yeah, yeah, that's a gutter bones. We're just gonna put that to the side there. Not not be too concerned about it. Alright, keep in it going. 
Skargan Hellkite. So this is another one of those five mana dragons with haste. Um, the ability makes it really, really good, though. I certainly think that we'll see play in standard. There are enough other dragons that Big Red is still viable. There's enough ways to power them out, and they have enough of an impact on the board as soon as they come in, and if any of them stick around, they just do a shit ton of work. Deputy of Detention, this is another card that I'm looking at for modern humans. It is not a human, but it is a detention sphere that you can vial in, and I think that makes it well worth it. Also, Knight of Autumn, Knight of Autumn is not a human either. And I said this in my humans video, but that card saw play day it got printed. People were all over that. And for good reason. Uh, Benthic Biomancer, don't really care. It, it's cute. It isn't great. It's fine. But this guy, though, this is insane. This is castable. You can buy all it in. If Wizards ever becomes a viable strategy in Modern, I know it showed up for a little while, but it didn't really do too much. If it ever becomes something that people are actually trying to do, I, I think that card's just going to go places. And even if it isn't, um, in Standard... The Dovin decks might want it. These white-blue Thopter Tempo decks that we're sure to see a little bit of, if not a whole lot of, going forward. I mean, it just it it has places where it can live and thrive, and I think one of those places is going to be in humans, not Dovin, obviously. The deputy Dovin. I don't know what Dovin does. Alright, Ethereal Absolution, this card might be the best bomb there is in Limited. Better than the Planeswalkers, better than anything else. This, however, the Essence Capture, I think this will probably see play in Standard, um, whereas Ethereal Absolution is kind of just a Limited card. Essence Capture does enough, and it could have a home in those blue-white Thopter Tempo decks that I was mentioning earlier. If those end up making a showing, uh, I will not be surprised to see this card all over the place, main boards and sideboards. Foil Syndicate Guild Mage, that's kind of cool looking. Simic Ascendancy, that's something that I don't think anyone's ever going to win a game with. Um, there's just so much setup cost that goes into it. If it was just asking for 20 counters, that would already be ridiculous. Ooh, Spellbreaker. Very happy about this guy. If this was just asking for 20 one one counters across creatures you control, sure. But it's asking for 20 or more growth counters on it itself. That, that's a lot of fucking mana, y'all. I mean, even if we don't activate it every time. If we do activate it every time, we're talking 60 mana. Let's say we don't activate the Ascendancy every time. Let's say our creatures have two mana activations for, uh, for Adapt, or whatever that mechanic is called. Adapt, right? Is it Adapt? I know there's something with it in here. We'll find it. I don't know why I'm not just looking through the pack, but even if it's a mana per counter, which is an insane rate, better rate than the ooze gives you, um, even if that's the case, you're spending 20 mana and you have to keep that thing on the field the whole time. I mean, Sandard would have to slow down so much to a crawl for that to be a viable strategy. I've heard some people, we're seeing so many of these, I've heard some people being real excited about it, I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, now, Priest of Forgotten Gods, sacrifice two other creatures, 
tap it to do so. Any number of target players each lose two life and sack a creature. You add black, black, and draw a card. That's pretty nutso, right? I mean, again, we don't know if we're going to see aristocrats in standards, but if we do a double sack outlet that hurts your opponent, makes them sack a creature, and gives you mana, and draws you a card, well, that's just too good to be true. More foils, a cinder vines, I Again, this doesn't seem like something that's going to be super dominant, but maybe if those gruel decks come around. Angelic Exaltation, I'm not sure how to feel about it, but I'm putting it aside. Maybe it goes in some of the token decks if those show up and make a big splash. If that's the case, I think that card could be what pushed those decks over the edge. Uh... There's a Lavinia, the other card I talked about for the human stack. Uh, we just hit the trifecta, and I'm real damn happy about it. But yeah, if the, if the token stacks do end up being a big deal, this card essentially giving something super uh, keyword I can't think of right now. Uh, the thing that Noble Hierarch does. Exalted. Exa uh, it, I, I don't know why I can't think of that. That's a big fucking deal, though. I mean, that card could just be a serious beater. Here's another light up the stage. These are a buck twenty-five on Magic Online, and I think that is perfectly reasonable. Uh, Vary the circle. Don't really care. It's another one of those cards that just isn't going to do all of the things that I want it to. Um, looks good on its surface. Absolutely a bomb for limited. Not, oh, look, a foil ascendancy. Uh, Bedeck Bedazzle's fine. It isn't. That's disappointing. Let's see if we can hit... Another walker in these last three packs. Man, I hope so. I would love a Kaya. I'm actually a big fan of Kaya. Um, I like the idea that Wizards is testing out these cheaper Planeswalkers that have less of a back-breaking, game-ending effect to them. Uh, Tome of the Guild Pack? Yep, not, not playing that ever. But I do appreciate that. They're kind of like sideboard walkers. Um, and I think that's even better, actually. Planeswalkers that you don't necessarily want in your main deck are interesting from a design standpoint. Uh, they're interesting from a consumer standpoint. You don't need four of them. You're not just trying to do that. Um... And they, they give neat little layers to the game. Clear Mind and Sphinx's Insight. A couple other commons I think could be a big deal. I actually do like Clear the Mind as a one of in uh, Jeskai Control. I have had in my sideboard previously, uh, not Growth Chamber Guardian because that would be silly, but I, I have had Enhanced Surveillance in my sideboard and I've actually enjoyed it a bit. Uh, it helps in the mirror matches so much, and getting the extra scry out, or the extra surveil out of uh, Sinister Sabotage is pretty nice. Here we go, last pack. Let's see what we can hit, and no, we're not going to review pulls, because they have not been very good. Well, what do you know about that, y'all? Bad pulls continue to be bad, but I had a good time. I hope you all did as well. And we did get some decent cards. So, uh, hopefully, I will see y'all back here before too, too long. And maybe we can do this again. If not, feel free to give us a like, a share, a subscribe, a follow. Team Chaos MTG on just about every platform there is. Uh... Just, you know, give us a search and click some buttons. It takes literally no effort. And as always, I've been Dodge. You've been awesome. Have a great night.